Hey guys, Sherry from The Watering Mouth here. Look at this guy. This is my brother Nate. Very exciting interview for me because um, I love him to death. We are very, very close. We weren't always close though, <laughs> and we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go, but I'm so excited because Nate has actually adopted the Nutritarian lifestyle just uh, five months ago. When did, you, when did you start? April 14th. April 14th, so it's been just a little while here. Thank you so much brother for being on this interview with me. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, so I actually got a couple requests for this interview. I did a video when I went back to Michigan for the 4th of July, and they saw him on the video and saw him uh, you know, in there doing the diet as, as well with me and wanted to know a little bit more about his journey because he's like a newbie, but he's having such great success. So let's jump into some questions and we will find out more from my dear brother here. We're gonna get into detail on what happened, how you came into this, and what your success has been like. But I wanna just mention first, before we get into all that, every time I do a video lately, I've been doing these free PDFs that come along with them. And they include the favorite recipes and some other tips and things of whoever I'm interviewing or whatever topic I'm doing, they're called my cheat sheets. I'm gonna be asking Nate to send over his favorite recipes that we're gonna to probably touch on a little bit here in this video, so you guys can check those out as well. You sign up for getting those recipes and all of those, all of the previous cheat sheets, the current ones and the future ones, at thewateringmouth.com slash cheat sheets. And I'm gonna put a link for that down below or above, depending on where you're seeing this video. And you can get those cheat sheets and find out his recipes. So let's jump into the questions here. Besides being my brother and the best uncle in the whole entire world, tell us about who you are in real life. Who I am in real life. I'm just a guy, really. <laughs> oh God, here we go. This is gonna be a really long, too. long interview. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a driver for a transportation company right now. Going to be going to school here pretty soon. Uh, going to be getting in, into uh, addictions counseling. So, well, I grew up with this girl on the other side of the screen here, <laughs> on the other end of this interview, and she's amazing. And <clears throat> I don't know, my life has kind of been not difficult, but I've made it a little difficult. I've gotten into into some trouble with some addiction problems and stuff like that. Um, oh, you have? I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> with the with that whole lifestyle comes bad habits. And one of the worst habits that I've had since, you know, obviously I've stopped, uh, you know, using drugs and drinking and everything, uh, is the eating habits. Yeah. Um, I ate until I couldn't eat anymore all the time. And it wasn't good food either. It was fast food, junk food, sugar, salt, everything that's just absolutely horrible for a human body. And for, I would say, the last 10 years, I've always known that I eat horrible. And I've always watched my weight just climb and climb and climb. And I would, I, I've tried everything to, 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 to lose the weight. I've tried numerous amounts of diets. I've tried not eating. Um, I've done everything short of any type of anorexia or uh, bulimia or anything like that. I've tried eating less during my meals. I've tried eating s more meals with s smaller amounts. I've tried fad diets. I've tried a lot of stuff and it just doesn't work. None of it ever worked. I would get maybe a month's worth of very, very, very minimal results and it just wasn't enough for me. Like, it just, it doesn't pay off. Yeah. Until now. <laughs> I, yeah, I appreciate, um, first of all, I appreciate you going into the addiction stuff. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, and I just want to say, as the proud sister, yesterday, we're filming this video in September. I'm not sure exactly when it will publish, but yesterday was your eight-year clean date. So I just yeah. want to say, so, eight years. <laughs> so proud of you, brother. So proud. Um, and we had, you know, a lot of family issues and things like that, that this was one of them. There's lots of different things in our past that were difficult. Uh, but for you, I've watched you grow so much in your journey. And when you talk about wanting to get into addictions counseling and things like that, it's so inspirational for me because 
seeing you go through what you went through and then wanting to help people through the same thing. It's very similar to what I'm doing as well. Of course, mine is the food and yours yeah. may be the food too or, or drugs and things like that. But it's so inspiring to see you take something that was very negative and turn it into something so positive. I'm so proud of you for that. Watching your journey as well, once you decided to pick up the nutritarian lifestyle has been equally as inspiring to me because I feel like, you know, sometimes it's harder for, for some people to take on this lifestyle and start, but for you, it's kind of cool because you have a very unique perspective and that you're coming from addiction, from mm -hmm. a different type of addiction, and so you're trying to conquer this addiction um, as well. And you know, oftentimes we see people who give up smoking or give up drinking or give up drugs, and they use something else as their addiction, or someone gets, um, you know, a gastric bypass surgery or something like that, and the chances of picking up a different addiction after a surgery like that are greatly increased as well. So it's kind of interesting to see, to watch you go through this and to improve each little thing as you go. Yeah. So let's talk about your success. Let's talk about how things are going. So tell me what your heaviest weight was and um, when was the moment in your journey that you knew you needed to change the food stuff and, and like what actually flipped it for you? First question you asked, what, what was my highest weight? Um, April 14th, uh, 2018, I was 260 pounds. Um, 260. 260. Yeah, 260. Okay. And how tall are you? 5'9". Five 5'9". Nine. Five nine. This, the nutritarian diet, I guess kind of started a couple years ago when you introduced it to me. Mm-hmm. Um, when you introduced it to me, you gave me some recipes and stuff like that, and I knew I could do it. Uh, but I was just in a position—I was in a position at that point where I just don't think I was ready. I was, you know, I was running a halfway house. I was in charge of a bunch of different people who were in, still in those bad habits, and yeah. they ate the way I ate. So it just really didn't work out at that point. I wasn't able to actually like make the choice in my mind. I guess you would say. But it wasn't until when mom came out and visited you earlier in the year, you had introduced her to a couple recipes mm -hmm. and she had tried it and she had come home and told me, you know, oh, this is something I think I could do. Mm -hmm. Like, why don't we try it? And I was like, okay. And then we both made the commitment to, to get into the diet. But I kind of had like, what was it, two or three years before that to kind of mull that diet all over in my mind, yeah. kind of get to a a point to where I had thought about it enough to to actually make a decision mm -hmm. and when I had made the decision you know obviously I was 260 pounds I got out of breath going up and down on one flight of stairs all I wanted to do was just sit around and do nothing even just my state of mind was just and I can only see that I can only see my state of mind back then right now because of how much like my mind has changed just from like Yes, you would say detoxing yeah. um, from the whole detox process. So when mom had come home, we had talked about a little bit. She knew that I had tried it a little bit in the past, and we both kind of made a commitment to each other to, to try it. So we got with you. We kind of learned the, 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 the outline of the diet, like what we can, what we can't, what we can't eat, what we can't eat, um, you know, what we should do here in the, in, in the beginning of the diet to yeah. actually get the diet going and and get ourselves detoxed and 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 start off right. Mm -hmm. But I think that there was a little bit more to it than just making the decision. Yeah, mulling it over in my mind for a couple of years did help, but at the same time, it's all about. I think that it all started with me with acceptance. I had to accept the fact that my body and my mind were just so out of shape that there wasn't really any hope for me getting, number one, in physical shape, number two, losing the weight, um, there wasn't really a way to do that simply. I yes. couldn't just start exercising and just start eating right. Like, I had to make a whole mental change. Yeah. And for me, it, it started with, and, and, I, and I realized it when I thought of the word acceptance. I had to accept the fact that I was fat. Like... 260 pound, pounds defined by medical standards that is obese. Mm. And I think like over the years, I've like kind of looked at the fact that I'm obese as no, I'm not really obese. That's just what they say. That's yeah. just what society says. And also, I mean, you know, when I picture what you looked like then, 
like you were upright, you know, yeah. you're wearing yeah. regular clothes and you could get around and do things. So you probably, it's kind of maybe one of those slippery slopes where it just feels mm -hmm. like, you know, yeah. I was definitely overweight, but I wasn't quote unquote morbidly obese. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, to look at myself and tell myself that I'm not obese was a lie. And that lie only fueled the inability to accept the fact that I needed to change. I needed to make a change. And that that change had to happen soon or it's going to be too late. Yeah. Like something gonna, bad's going to happen. I'm going to have a heart attack or, or, or something like that. Once I like started look, looking at the fact that like I'm not where I want to be, I'm not at the right weight and I'm not healthy, my heart has to be marbled with so much fat that I like it's about ready to stop ticking. Yeah. <laughs> um, my overall health is just absolutely disgusting, and it took me sitting there looking at that and accepting those facts. And it's about, it's, I think, number one, for me, it was about accepting the facts first. Yeah. Number one, I'm overweight. Number two, I am not in shape. Number three, it has to stop. So I humbled myself a little bit, accepted the fact that I'm overweight and that I need some help, and I asked my little sister for some help. And I said, heck no, rotten heck. <laughs> Um, but I was actually very surprised when you welcomed me with open arms to this way of life. Mm. Uh, I bucked it a lot in the beginning, like your beliefs and like I, I would put it in your beliefs and your facts and you know <laughs> what you wanted me to do or control me somehow. But no, it's not. It wasn't about that. Like you know what you're talking about. So and, and I knew that because of watching you go through your changes. Yeah. And I wanted that. And essentially, that's what the program that I attended for my addictions problem yeah. was all about. You, 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 you get with people who have been through the same problem before. Yeah. And you learn from them. And if they tell you what to do, don't take offense to that. It's not about, it's not about you know, they're trying to control you. Like, they're trying to tell you how, you, how they did it. So yeah. do it. Yeah. And that's all it is. You have to accept what's, what's real and then do what has to be done to change it. So I did that. Yeah, and I got to say, you know, those first set of conversations we have, because I know you haven't read the book yet, but what's cool is you have mm -hmm. like a built-in, you know, coach for this that yeah. you can call whenever yeah. you need. And so we have... And for right, now, for right now, that's really all I want. I want to get into the diet. I wanted, I wanted to get into the diet mm -hmm. at first. I wanted to understand, like, what's really going on in my body. And, yeah. and you... And, and you knew what it, what was happening. Yeah, it was really cool because in the beginning, guys, we, you know, he started this back in April to May, June, July, August, September. It's been five months now, over five months. And so we've had, as if I was his private coach, basically, phone calls upon phone call. You know, the first few weeks were pretty touch and go. They were pretty, you know, heavy. We had to really talk a lot on the phone get a lot of information out and But we only did that because you volunteered. Now yeah, of course. I remember in the beginning I remember in the beginning in the beginning you were like, okay, if you want to do this, you've got to do it. I'm not yeah. gonna chase after you. Yeah. So what it took was me actually making the phone calls to you and yeah. actually talking to you and actually getting the support and doing what I needed to do according to that support. Like in the beginning it was it was up to me and You're right. Made sure I understood that. Yeah, and, that's absolutely right. And, and you're I that's, think that's very important. Like no one's ever going to chase after me to ch for me to change my diet. Like okay. it's up to me. So yeah, yeah, that's a really good up. point too. I I do remember because you and I talk on the phone at least once a week, and I remember at that point, you know, after the first couple of introductory calls of here's what you should eat, here's what you should do, yeah. we were just <clears> kind of having our weekly call, and we'd be yeah. like, hey, how's it going? And I'd be like, hey, how's it going? And I would ask kind of how's the diet going, whatever, but no real pressure. But then it turned yeah. into because you know, we have such a good rapport conversation wise anyways. And we've talked so much in the past about like your issues in the past and how you got over them. So it was cool for me to actually listen to your story and how you were relating it to yeah. that. And right. then it came down to just a bunch of questions from you. It was like a little Q and a session every time. Yeah. And I remember 
I, I'm kind of kicking myself for not having recorded all these conversations because they were such fantastic questions that you asked. And because we were so comfortable, like I, you know, could just like say what I wanted with the, all the swearing and cussing included. But, um, you know, we're sitting, you're asking questions like, I just feel terrible this week. What's wrong with me? What's going on? Yep. Or, you know, these kinds of things. And it was really cool to kind of hear from that real beginner perspective and give those answers to you and hear what you were struggling with. In the beginning, when I first started doing it, I had so many questions because I could feel like all the changes that were happening. Like I could feel my body. And I'm going to tell, and, and for everyone who's watching this video, I'm going to tell you those, the initial Detox is one of the most is one of the hardest things. The initial detox of all the crap in my system was probably one of the worst experiences, including my addiction, that I've ever had in my life. It felt so bad. I just I can't even explain how disgusting it felt. Like the headaches, the depression, the the no energy, the just disgusting feeling that I felt like for the first month of this diet, like it, it was, it, oh, it, uh, I felt like I had a flu. And I do remember, I think it was the fifth or sixth day, I wrestled with something. I started having hallucinations. Like I literally started having hallucinations. I would get stars out here. Wow. And it wasn't from being malnourished. It wasn't, it wasn't, it was no feeling like that at all. Yeah. It was a very strange hallucination. It was visual, but I knew that it was detox because I was eating. I was yeah. eating a lot of food. I was eating tons of food, so I knew I wasn't malnourished. Yeah. Just that feeling, I knew it was a detox, and I knew that like I had to push through that. And it took a while to push through it. I mean, it took the, it took like the first month to push through that. Yeah. But, but then my head started clearing up and it started feeling right and my mental capacity felt started feeling full I don't know I don't know I don't quite know how to explain it but like when you eat like a cheeseburger or a bag of Doritos or like something really bad afterward you feel tired you, you feel blah like you don't want to do anything yeah well me and the way I was eating I didn't get that just after I ate I had that all the time like that's just the way my body that's how run down my body was yeah but it wasn't until after the detox till that started clearing up. And that, I'm going to tell you, was one of the first times I knew that this was going to work for me because it literally changed the way I felt. Just by changing the way I eat, changed the way I felt. And it felt so good. And that was where the motivation started. Mm. You told me, just get through the first month. Just get through that detox. Just get through it. Yeah. And that was kind of... First, that's what I had to do in my addiction too. To yeah. stop using drugs, you can't just stop using drugs. You've got to detox. You've got to initiate those new receptors and get your brain going and 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 get moving in life in a good way. Yeah. But equating that to to the to the diet, I had to do what I had to do in the beginning. I don't really even think I needed that much. I want to do this frame of mind. I, I guess you would say mm -hmm. to to actually start doing this diet, like. I just listened to you and just ate what I needed to eat for the first month, get to that first bit of results, and that will fuel it. Yeah, and that was when it that, took off. That's where it went. Yeah. And, it's, and I want to make I want to make a comment about the detox thing you're talking about because you mentioned it was about a month that it took for you to kind of get to a place of starting to feel some clarity, starting to feel some like, yeah. oh, this is this might actually work, and you get that motivation. Yeah. So I want to comment on that strongly to anyone who is watching this that hasn't yet gone through that or is interested in doing this diet but, you know, don't know how to do it or whatever. It's not always a month for everybody. Some people it's yeah. just a week. Some people it's just a couple weeks. Other people it can even take a little bit longer than a month. But if you could imagine what he explained on the other side of that where you're clear, you feel clear, yeah. you feel no. good. Tell me, so so what I want to say is, if you can imagine that, knowing it's worth going through that, it's worth everything. So tell me what what it's like now. What it's like now. Um, before, it's, it, and you know how they say hindsight's twenty twenty. Yeah. Like, I can look back at it now 
with so much more clarity and see like why I was doing the things I was doing. Mm -hmm. The number one thing that's different is my, is my energy level. My energy level has skyrocketed. And I will also say that I know that according that because of this diet, my sleep schedule has become completely concrete. Like I would fill my body with this crap. And I would be able to sleep for 12 hours after that. Yeah. I'd, I'd eat before I go to bed, and then I could sleep. But I would sleep for 12 hours. Yeah. And I would wake up tired, yeah. and I'd want to go back to sleep. <laughs> and I would have no energy. And then I would get up, and I would have to have a giant cup of coffee to yeah. wake up. Yeah. And then to wake up, and then to stay woke up, I would have to, like, drink more coffee yeah. or, or, or add more sugar to that coffee and, and stay up. But then eventually that crash would come, and it would be right back to where I was when I first woke up yeah now I go to bed I'll have I'll have a very tiny snack before I go to bed okay. very very small amount of oatmeal mm -hmm. I'll go to bed and I won't be able to sleep more than eight hours <laughs> I literally cannot sleep any more than eight hours wow I wake up between it's, it's between seven and a half hours and eight hours once I've gotten that sleep I open my eyes I'm up like my brain is up and I can't sleep anymore. You did, the, that alone was gives me so much motivation to just keep going in this direction. Yeah. Because when you, if you go to sleep for eight hours and you wake up and you try to go to work for eight hours, while you're tired as hell. Yeah. Because your body's just so crap. So yeah. Full of so much crap. At that point, you get home. You're exhausted. You want to do nothing. But you've got to go to the grocery store. You've got to clean the house. You've got to do this. You've got to yeah. do that. Now I can do those things and not have to take a nap throughout the day, not fall asleep in front of the TV at night. Yeah. Like I'm literally asleep for seven and a half to eight hours and then I'm up for 16 hours Yeah. and I sleep for seven and a half hours. Then I'm up for 16 hours and there's no problem with it. Now I do have to say there've been a couple times where I've slept. I've gone out and I've eaten at a restaurant with super fatty, super salty, super sugary food. But the first thing I notice, <laughs> fall asleep. <laughs> Just instant. Like I'll eat that meal, I'll go home, I'll sit down to watch a movie, and I won't finish that movie because I'll be asleep before the beginning credits. Yep. I'll be asleep, and then I'll just sleep through the movie. Then I want to go to bed. Yeah. But it's eight o'clock at night. Yeah. So like, what the heck? Like, <laughs> we're gonna sleep at the completely wrong time. Yeah. But that's like why I didn't do it again, because of all the things that instantly came back. Yeah. All of the, number one, the guilt feelings. The, yeah. Oh my God, what did I just do? Like, why did I just eat that much food? But to have those feelings after not having them for so long. Yes. Like after the initial detox. And my body is still detoxing. Wait, so what weight are you at now? I'm at 198. 198, you guys. Hold on, yeah. hold on. I know that's not your goal weight, and we'll talk about that in a sec, but I just want to take a second, you guys. This man lost 62 pounds. 62 April. pounds. In five months. In five months. I, I, thought, it was, I thought that was going to take the rest of my life to lose. I'm so proud but of you, dude. Five months, but I'm going to tell you something. That five months is full of work. Mm -hmm. That five months is full of researching recipes, researching yeah. ingredients, researching yeah. different facts about different foods and knowing what I'm putting in my body. Yeah. If I don't know what I'm putting in my body, like when I go to a restaurant, if I don't know what I'm putting in my body, I just throw a bunch of pasta and salt and tomatoes and, and, and vinegar and, and crap in there that tastes good. That's not going to do me any good. Yeah. It's about knowing what's going into your body. You've had such success with not only weight loss, but with the actual um, sort of mind changes that occur and body changes that occur with detox. And it's a very powerful thing to go through. It's been so wonderful to watch with you. I want to talk a little bit about how you've actually done it. So I want to know what types of foods have you been eating? I know you, you kind of like to just throw things together or whatever. So tell me what are the types of foods that you eat and what kind of ingredients do you put in let's there? Put, let's, let's put it this way. I eat soups, smoothies, and salads. Okay. Now, a year ago, if you, you, you couldn't have paid me to say that I'm going to eat a smoothie or that I'm going to eat a salad. Or, 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 or a damn soup as, as part of my staple diet, okay? That, like, that would never happen. But now, I can't imagine not having those as my diet. 
beans, greens, and veggies, soups, smoothies, and salads. I don't want to eat anything else. I don't want to. <laughs> because these foods make me feel good. Yeah. And I don't want to change that. What do you put in your favorite smoothie then? What do you usually do for smoothies? Um, smoothies are greens. Greens. It's always greens. Mm -hmm. um, I'm to a point, like in the beginning, I had to put a lot of bananas and dates. Um, yeah. um, and and I, will, I will admit in the beginning, a couple times I even cheated with granular sugar, refined sugar. Um, but it helped because it started introducing me to the actual taste right. of green. Yeah. And green is a very foul taste in the beginning. It wasn't it for me. And I Absolutely. hated it. it disgusting. Mm -hmm. So I had to mask it with tons of dates and, and, and sweet fruits and stuff yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. um, but now my go-to smoothie is a crap ton of spinach, a crap <laughs> ton of romaine, some blueberries, some cherries, and a half a banana. I just zip it up with... Um, with um, almond milk, which almond milk, that's another thing. I used to drink about a gallon of whole milk every day, period. That's just part of, that was just part of my diet, okay? Mm -hmm. A gallon of whole milk every day, okay? Now it's like a gallon of like unsweetened almond milk. And it's really weird because I tried smelling milk the other day, dude. I tried smelling milk the other day and it smelled so, so bad. I can't remember what I, I think it, because it smelled like feet. I knew that... <laughs> A mix between feet and vomit. And it was just, I'm going to tell you what, like before I could smell milk and it would just start my saliva, just bleh, like I really wanted to drink that milk. I would sit there and drink milk just to drink milk, okay? But now it's like to just even smell it is just so gross. But I'll say this. <laughs> if, I had, if I had cheated with a bunch of milk, like... And I'm not saying like cheating with like certain stuff is wrong. Like some people have to do that and that's okay. Yeah. I didn't. And like to try and smell it now, it's or even try and drink it, it just it it feels odd to me. And that's that's an interesting point I want to make to clarify and to to further that a little bit because there's a difference between um going all in and dipping your toe in the water. Yeah. Dipping your toe in the water is the type of approach that definitely works and a lot of people do it, but it just takes a whole heck of a lot yeah. longer. What you did was you went straight straight in hard, you did everything you had to do, you know, maybe a tiny bit of sugar here and there, but like all those other things yeah. you just got rid of. And that made the detox happen for you and whatever, um, however long it was going to take you particularly, but it would have taken you months to detox if yeah. you hadn't done it that yeah. way. Yeah. And so it's important to understand the difference between that. While it's harder and it feels worse for the first few weeks, if you go all in at first, it yeah. actually is the easiest way to go long term because it helps that detox along. Yeah. In the beginning, I will say that I depended a lot on recipes. Mm -hmm. But now, because my diets are soups, uh, soups, salads, and smoothies, it's about varying those in whatever I want to do. I can yeah. put whatever I of, of, of course, according to what the diet is, <laughs> according to nutritarian food, yeah. but I can put whatever I want in that food to make it taste the way I want. Yeah. And it's not something that like I have the... Prof I have the ability to just go ahead and educate people on what curry is or what tarragon does or, you know, what white pepper does as opposed to black pepper or mm -hmm. um, what lima beans taste like as opposed like, I know what they taste, but I don't know how to explain that to people. But yeah. it's been about experimenting with what I put in my soups, salads, or smoothies. Yeah. And it's, and that's a good concept because it's actually, it just really comes down to formulas, right? When you know the types yeah. of meals that highlight these types of foods and give you the most of the, what I always like to say, the greens, beans, and veggies, that's the sort of first thing you think of. Mm -hmm. When you get the most of those, it always ends up being a soup salad or a smoothie or a stir yeah. fry, something like that. Um, so when you, we've talked about this before in the beginning, which is, is a really cool concept that happens when you get into this, is that in the beginning, you might feel really deprived because you feel like, oh, I can only yeah. have, you know, greens and <laughs> berries and whatever. You think like, I can yeah. only have this much stuff. But it actually kind of monumentally expands what you can eat after of that course. because there are so Definitely. many different types of beans, so many different types of yeah. vegetables, so many different types of berries and fruits and things like that. So when they you stick... They all have such drastic difference in taste. Yeah. And, and, uh, and part of the detox with the taste change and how my mouth changed and how my yeah. feelings of hunger changed and everything, like it, 
eating becomes a whole different experience. It's no longer an event. It's no longer like something that, number one, I can't wait to do because I'm so hungry. Yeah. Like, I get hungry and I know it just by a very small, subtle feeling that I get in my whole body. Yeah. It's not about, oh my God, I've got to eat now. Yeah. Like, I get hungry and I know it, but I can put it off for an hour. Yep. And then I eat and that feeling goes away, but I don't ever get starving anymore yeah. ever like it i don't get that starving feeling anymore yeah like that feeling in your gut where it's just pinching the inside of you and squeezing so hard yeah. you just want to rip out i never get that feeling anymore mm -hmm. ever yeah except for after i eat something stupid yeah <laughs> yeah we talked about that just recently actually because there's a difference between toxic hunger and true hunger and that's what you're touching on here the toxic hunger is what a standard American dieter would feel when they eat those regular foods, but true hunger is, it's an actual feeling that say the cavemen would have felt or something yep. like that. When you're not actually, you're hungry, but you can put it off because there are no deer around for you to kill, yeah. you know? <laughs> like you can yeah. put it off because it's, um, and yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't hurt. It's not like this pain yeah. that you have yep. to fix. It's not, it doesn't Just make you... Now, yes. I will say, if I do go long enough, I do, st like, if I go three hours longer than that, like, which I've done a couple times, like, I start to feel it. I get yeah. a little bit faint. I start to feel a lot less energy, and yeah. then, like, like <laughs> ugh, it just feels yuck. But, yeah. but it's cool you know. to be so in touch with that and know yeah. that, interestingly enough, you could just grab a couple of beans and eat That's them. That's literally and what feeling... it's like. Yeah. And it takes it away. Yeah. Instantly. <laughs> exactly. A handful of chickpeas or a handful of... Uh, a small handful of almonds or something like that. You yes. just throw them down there and it's gone. Yeah. Like, it's just weird. It's just so cool. So tell me about your soups. What do you usually like to do for soup? Well, right now and for the past entire time that I've been on this diet, I've fallen in love with curry. Curry? So curry is, I, I don't, I mean, I've had, you know, I've eaten cur bad food with curry in it and stuff like that. And it's hot and it's great and it's wonderful. But experimenting with different vegetables along with the curry... Mm. is a journey in itself. It's just, it's crazy how different a carrot tastes plain rather than with curry. So, but yeah, I mean, with my soups, the soups, there's just so many different soups that you can make that, like, you can't put all the recipes down. So, but the curry soup, like, I'm on a, I'm on the curry kick right now. So, um, it's basically a curry soup with whatever vegetables I want to put in it. Whatever vegetables and whatever beans. I like black beans. I like lima beans. I like kidney beans. I like pintos. I like uh, 15 beans. I like all kinds of beans. <laughs> I like all kinds of vegetables. Vegetables I've never even heard of before this diet. Like, it's about finding the different combinations and, and wow, that tastes good and that tastes good and that tastes awesome. So, you guys, uh, I, I want to interrupt him for a sec because um, to hear my brother say lima bean, to hear my brother say black bean, curry, <laughs> I love all these kinds of vegetables. It's like watching an alien say something that I just, it, honestly, when I heard him start to talk about this stuff, you guys, I was, it was like, I almost just started crying when he said vegetables just a minute ago, because it's like such a huge thing for me over so much time, and I've been doing this for over five years, to finally get to speak the same language with one of my now favorite I make people. A I want to make a comment. I want to let your viewers know that just a couple months before I actually started doing this diet I used to refer to you as number one you ate like a bird all you was all you ate was twigs and berries <laughs> uh, I used to make fun of you because of this diet like I used to make fun of I used to make fun of that like she's not getting to experience what I get to experience anymore she doesn't get to have fun when she eats anymore mm. ignorance is bliss very much so because I actually get into this diet and I'm like, why have I gone this long without doing this? Like, why? There's been no point to it. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Good point, so, brother. Thank I don't you. make fun of her anymore because I've actually tried it. So just try it. <laughs> wow, that was powerful. Thank you for saying that. And I'm pissed off at you for calling me names <laughs> earlier. Just kidding. All right, it's getting dark in Michigan, so we had to turn a little bit of light on here. Um, okay, so my next question for you, brother, is what has been your biggest struggle as a nutritarian? Like, have you gone off plan, and what was that like? Uh, I have a couple times. 
not off plan. You know, I've had my, I've had my quote unquote cheat meals, but they're not really cheat meals anymore. Like I don't, I, at first I call them cheat meals, but I don't call them cheat meals anymore because when I eat them after I eat them, like it no longer feels like cheating. It just feels like not the guilt and shame stuff. I'm saying like my body just feels absolutely disgusting. So like, it feels like I just cheated myself Yeah. when I, you know what I'm saying? So, um, but yeah, I've had a couple times where the sushi incident, <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, I felt, I fell in love with sushi and that is not according, according to the nutritarian plan. Uh, I ate it five days in a row. I stopped losing weight. There was yeah. just too much rice, just too much salt, just too much stuff in it that yeah. just slowed the diet down. And fortunate enough for me, that was enough, enough motivation to say, okay, stop that. Like, yeah. let's not do that. Okay. Like now you know what to do to stay at the weight, um, that you want to stay at. Once you get there, exactly. but you're not there. So keep going, the, keep going like the, the better way. A couple other things that I've realized is that, and this is another thing that you would have never caught me saying before, but like I'm to the point where I don't eat beef, beef anymore. Like I can't eat beef anymore. Not just because it makes me feel bad, but like my feelings are actually getting hurt when I eat beef. Like I've done my research to find out like what actually happens in slaughterhouses. Like I'm no longer ignorant to that stuff. Yeah. And ignorance, obviously, ignorance is always bliss. But I'm no longer in. I'm no longer ignorant to that anymore. And so, even if I'm not even if I do, because I haven't had a burger. Mm-hmm. But if I was to eat a burger, like I wouldn't just bust out crying and and sobbing and stuff. But like it would affect my heart. Like I would understand yeah. that like that animal was like put in a position where he had no control over the rest of his life mm-hmm. ever again. Like he no longer had freedom anymore. Like he was on a death sentence. That's really powerful. I have to talk a little bit about my journey for a second, too, because when I started, it was really hard for me, and I've talked about this before, but it was really hard for me to start because I didn't have anyone near me that was doing it. I'd never made any of the meals before, so I didn't know it was going to taste good. And when I looked at the recipes in the back of Eat to Live, I was like, ugh, this sounds terrible. I don't want to eat this stuff for the rest of my life. I'm not going to like it because I love cheese. I love pasta. I love butter. I love meat. I loved all those things. And so it took me a long time to actually like make that leap and do it. And one of the things that actually helped me to stay on for the first few months was by watching those documentaries, the ones that are not even the worst ones, not even the ones that have all the footage, just ones that have little clips was enough for me to go, I'm done with me. I don't need that anymore. And dairy as well, because it's the it's a similar type of industry. So for me, actually, it was forcing myself to no longer be ignorant that allowed me to have that kind of a motivation to go, oh, now I really understand why. Because it's hard to just do it based on health. It's hard to just do it based on something that's going to happen in 30 years, maybe, or 20 years yeah. or whatever. But if you actually know something that's happening right now that you can affect and fix by your own choices, it made it a little easier for me. So thank you for sharing that because I think a lot of people shy away from educating themselves there. And I'm not trying to take this to like a, like a huge vegan discussion because I myself am not vegan. Yeah. But mm-hmm. it's something that I think is important to understand just so you kind of get the whole picture because a lot of us, and this is, Nate said this too, when we're going on our regular life, we have that ignorance. We choose not to know. I mean, we know stuff that happens, but we choose not to know enough to where it would actually affect what we do. And so it's kind of cool that you, as a man too, because guys don't usually go there. They don't usually, you know, yeah. change that sort of thing too. So when you were talking about eating beef, that reminded me of when you had lasagna Tell me, yeah. tell us the lasagna story. So we're at Bravo, right? Like this, this awesome restaurant, like mm-hmm. this restaurant I used to love going to all the yeah. time, right? Yeah. Like I would just eat, 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 eat. I would get an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert, mm-hmm. right? So the bread came, and I was like, ooh, bread. Mm, this is awesome. So I put bread in, put some butter on it, and they had their little olive oil dip and stuff in there, and that, that was cool. But then they brought this plate of lasagna out to me that I ordered, obviously. Mm-hmm. If I ordered this lasagna, <sighs> like, it came to me, and I was like, whoa, that's going to be so awesome. Yeah. But it was cheese, just tons of cheese, a bunch of, like, this tomato sauce stuff, marinara-type stuff, 
And it smelled really good. But I tasted it, and the first thing that hit me was salt. Just salt. Just salt. Like, I've never tasted more salt. There was only one other time that I tasted more salt in my mouth, and that was when I was a little boy, and I took a spoonful of salt and put it in my mouth just to see what it was like, right? Okay, so <laughs> I put this massive ball of salt lasagna in my mouth, and it tasted good. Like, it tasted, like, good other than the salt, yeah. right? I'm like, yeah, this is good. This is good. This is good. And looking back on it, I remember the taste of the salt started to disappear. Like yes. it started going away. Yes. While I was eating the salt. Yeah. That's your, and your then taste buds. Very, your... very, very, very strange happened that I hadn't experienced in two and a half months. Mm -hmm. Cravings. Eat more. Eat more. Eat more. Eat. I could not stop eating. I could not stop eating. And I got so full. Like I used to do every time I ate, but I got so full and it felt bad because I couldn't stop eating because that's, it was almost like that salt and cheese triggered a craving in my mind that I yeah. hadn't activated in two and a half months. It's exactly what it was. Yep. Once that craving was activated, my body wasn't going to stop until it was completely full mm -hmm. of salt and cheese and meat. It was just... And then for days after that, it didn't, it wasn't as strong. Like, like the next day was horrible. Like I would, I wanted McDonald's. I wanted Burger King. I wanted salt. I just wanted salt and mm -hmm. stuff that had tons of flavor and tons of salt. Mm -hmm. I'm lucky enough to have gotten through that. And I actually had to use you a couple times to yeah. get me away from thinking about that. But at the same time, it was just, they call it a phenomenon of cravings. Because they're not real. Yeah. It's a phenomenon. It's something that hap that we train our brains to feel, to make us think that we're actually hungry. But it's not. We just want salt and sugar. So when I have a craving for that stuff, and if I actually answer that craving, I'm not going to stop eating. I will not be satisfied until I hurt yes. from eating. Yeah. So that was the lasagna incident. <laughs> It was fun. It was a good social experience that I hadn't had in a long time. Got to right. go out to eat with family and, and have all those, those fun feelings again. But the food completely changed the entire experience. Yeah. It so, just woke everything up that I had learned not that I had learned to suppress. Yeah. And like the cravings. I learned to get rid of the cravings, mm -hmm. but I didn't learn to suppress the cravings. I taught my body to feel the way it was supposed Posted before I ever even started getting cravings. Right. You fixed your physiology. You fixed exactly. your brain chemistry in order so that the cravings don't happen anymore. Mm -hmm. But the amazing part was how easy it was to get that stuff to come back. Those cravings. Yeah. And th those cravings and how, how, how hard it was to get them to go away. It was mm -hmm. just, ugh. So you said something about when you were at the restaurant. It was nice to go to the restaurant because you had those social things again. It felt fun. It was a good thing. The, just the food part sucked. Yeah. So how do you reconcile that in your life now when you're successful do you really miss going out do you go out how do you how do you do that and still feel happy miss, and not deprived right i don't miss going out anymore be, because i do go out um okay. the difference is i don't put myself in that same position okay um whatever i eat is always my choice okay i never have to get a certain type of food right never have to get lasagna just because it's on the menu. Right. I can choose a healthier item, so I do. So what do you but choose it takes, now? It takes thinking about and preparing for before I actually go out, though. Okay. Before I go out, I do have, still have to sit there every once in a while and say, okay, Nate, you're, you're on a new diet. You're in a new way of, li of, of eating and living. Don't screw it up. And accepting that and knowing that when I get to the restaurant, there's going to be a crap ton of stuff on that menu that I'm going to want to eat. Mm -hmm. That's super bad for me. Yeah. But I also know that a little small part of that menu is going to contain something that tastes just as good, but that's way better for me. Yeah. All restaurants have a healthy option now. You yeah. can't go to a restaurant without without seeing a healthy part of their menu. It's just not possible. Yeah. So when I go to the restaurant, I love to go out with family and friends and stuff like that. But I don't love to eat the bad stuff. So if that's the only thing that would stop me from going out with family or friends or that would stop me from enjoying that time. Like it's time for me to start thinking about like where my mind is. So that first couple months of me learning how to eat and stuff, it was good that I didn't go out with, cause I 
I didn't go out with family and friends and stuff then because yeah. my life was my mind was just not in a position to like be able to do that kind of stuff yeah. just because of crazy and harebrained. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but now that like I've adjusted to the diet, I've learned like the different responses that my body gives me according to the stimuli I give it um, and the food that I give it. I've learned to accept the fact that just eat off the re the good part of the menu. Just yeah. eat off the part of the menu. And as long as I do that, then I can still have f f have fun while I'm out. Yes. You know. Yeah, that's so smart. What do you like to get usually when 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 you go anywhere? What do you usually get at restaurants? Um. Well, I don't eat perfectly because there is really sure. no none of those restaurants that gives you a 100 percent. Yeah. There's no nutritarian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I'll do is like if I get something with chicken on it. Sometimes I'll take chicken off. Like if I get something with chicken in it, like I'll eat one or two pieces of chicken, but I won't eat all the chicken because I can know what's going to happen if I eat all the chicken. If I eat all the chicken, I'm not going to stop eating all the chicken, okay? And I'm going to eat everyone else's chicken. So <laughs> but just eat a couple pieces. I'm able to control my cravings now. So just a couple pieces is fine. But like if I'll, I'll eat like two pieces, like two small pieces of chicken, like, like that big. Mm -hmm. But I'll cut it up into like four to eight different pieces so that like I can – put a little tiny piece in with a bite or That's whatever. That's so smart. I want to highlight that, you guys, because he's actually doing something. I never told him about this, so for him to explain that he's just using tiny pieces at a time for each bite to kind of get this flavor, I never even explained that concept to him, but that's a very specific nutritarian concept that it's totally okay to have some chicken every once in a while, to have some beef or, or shrimp or whatever it is, as long mm -hmm. as you use it as a flavoring. So you use yeah. these tiny little pieces and you end up getting one, maybe two ounces at a time and you only do that once a week. Now you, you're 100% nutritarian. That's a nutritarian yeah. thing to do, and it's there's nothing wrong with that. You can totally right. do that, especially you if you're on a, a maintenance side of this. If you're trying to lose weight, that can be a little bit more difficult. That's, but That's exactly what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that when I do eat meat, it slows down, it slows down my weight loss drastically. Yeah. So if I eat a full chicken breast, I'm gonna, my, my weight loss is going to be shot for three days. Yeah. Here, that's just the way it is. Okay. But if I eat just like a couple small pieces of chicken and cut them up just to get the flavor in each bite of the rice or the beans or whatever it is that I'm eating mm -hmm. with it, then it doesn't slow it down. Yeah. It's just for, it's just for the flavor is yeah. really all it's for. It's so good that you notice those little nuances because those are the things that once you get over that first few weeks of detox, then you start to – and you're feeling good. Then you can start to actually – listen to what's happening in your body and like look at Nate he what he eats chicken one full chicken breast and he knows for three days the weight loss is shot that's a that's the same pattern I have it's the same exact thing and as you go you start to learn more things about how you lose weight personally and what it takes for you what what size meals and how much you need to eat in order to lose weight um, to get down to that healthy weight I know we put a lot of emphasis on weight in this video and all my other videos but it's because weight loss and being at a low healthy weight the low end of that BMI scale if you can is actually going to increase your longevity studies show it's actually going to be healthy for you in the long term so we do put a lot of emphasis on it because it is for our health and not you know just for vanity or whatever but hey the weight loss side of it is pretty fun too isn't it yeah yeah, yeah. definitely definitely I'm starting to look good like I'm starting to get a couple looks from the girls, you know? Before, like, all they could look at was the belly that stuck out a foot from my chest. I look down, I can't even see my feet, dude. Yeah. Like, I can't even see my feet. I have to bend over to see my feet. Mm -hmm. I can't sit on the toilet. I can't turn all the way around in the shower without bumping the sides of my shower. And what was it? Two months ago was the first time that I could literally put my hands down to my side and do a 360-degree turn in the shower without bumping anything. Okay, these are just like the and like I remember the day that my belly stopped touching my pants from hanging over so far, like hanging over my belt and then touching underneath my belt. Okay. Yeah. Like it doesn't do that anymore. I remember us talking about these benefits. Um, I think it was like a month ago. We started. You started mm -hmm. to really realize these things that were happening yeah. for you that were changing in your body. And tell me a little bit about your belt situation. I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to show you. <laughs> okay. Here's my belt. Yeah. It's a 47-inch uh, belt. Okay. Okay. 
It started with five holes. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. I've added one, two, three, four, five, six, seven holes, and I'm working on the eighth hole. Now, most people say, why don't you just get another belt? Okay, but this is going to be a souvenir. This is going to be motivation for, for the future because there's going to be a, a time when I'm, gonna, I'm going to be like given the choice to go back to that old way of eating and living. And this will be something that will keep it fresh. Oh, and mind you, probably tomorrow I'll be adding the eighth one, the eighth hole. I added, okay, and here's another thing. When I started it, when I put this extra hole in, it took a very, 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 very long time to get to that next one. For the next hole, it took a very long time, but not as long for that one. And then for this one, it took not as long for not as long to get to that one. Now this one right here, I put in my belt four or five days ago. I need to put another one in there already. So like from this hole to this hole was probably a month that I had to wait. Yeah. Now I'm putting new holes in because I have a third I have a 38 inch waist now, which is completely unheard of. Like that's never that's never happened before. Yeah. Like, that's never happened before. <laughs> are those new pants, too? These are my new pants, dude. <laughs> These are my new pants. These aren't my fat pants. They're my new pants. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so proud of you. Like, and the thing is, you guys, I haven't seen him in, I don't know, it's been a couple weeks or something. I haven't seen you in a couple weeks. And you look totally different already. Like, yeah. your neck is thinning out so much compared to the way it used to be. Like, you actually have a neck now. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and it used to go from here straight down. Yep, it absolutely just, did. Just I remember there that. Was no, there was no curve there. There was nothing there. Mm -hmm. And I can see the vein. I can see the veins on my hands and arms now. It just it just feels so much better. I'm so proud of you, man. Every every aspect of it. Yeah. Okay, so you said that you are a delivery driver. <clears throat> that means you're in a vehicle all day long. What are your yep. strategies during the day for staying on plan? How do you like take food with you? Well, it's pretty simple, really. If I want to do a salad, uh, I just bring a Tupperware container with the salad pre-made. Okay. Uh, when do you make the I salad? Do you make it at night or in the morning? In the morning. I've tried making it at night before, like the night before. Mm -hmm. But by the next day, it just starts to get wilty and yucky. Yeah. But the easiest thing for me has been a smoothie, just a regular smoothie, a piece of fruit, and some nuts. Okay. Uh, and of course, not too many nuts. So what you know. Yeah. But yeah, but I always just bring it with me because if I don't, then I go out to eat. <laughs> I'll yeah. get fast food or mm -hmm. do something stupid. You know. Mm -hmm. It's hard to keep up, like in the beginning, especially it was hard to keep my refrigerator stocked with the right stuff. Okay. Just because number one, it's always easier to, to buy the bad stuff and it's cheaper. Yeah. So you touched on this idea that, so you bring all your food with you and in the beginning, maybe it was a little hard to keep your fridge stocked, but how did you, like, was there a place where you were just like, oh my God, this is too hard. I don't want to do this. Did you ever feel that or, or was it easy for you? How'd you get through that? Yeah. Looking back on it. The first thing that I should have made the easiest and tackled first was where do I shop at, at the grocery store? Not where do I shop for groceries? Where do I shop at the grocery store? Okay. And in the beginning, if I have to go anywhere besides produce or the almond milk section or the spice section, yeah, it's not going to be good. Um, now, in the beginning, when I first started looking at the grocery store and tried zeroing out the center the entire center part of this of the store where all the aisles are mm -hmm. like all the aisles and the deli and, and all that stuff it was very intimidating but I think with the level of acceptance that I had in it or that I created within myself yeah I had to say all those other sections of the store are off limits period and it wasn't until I did that and made that choice and accepted that fact to where it started becoming easier for me to explore the produce section, mm -hmm. to explore the, the spices, to explore the, how many different beans that you can get and how many different 
um, grains that you can get and mm. stuff that's good for you. It's amazing how much of that stuff there actually is. There's not just apples and bananas in the produce section. Yes. There's water apples. There's star fruit. There's zucchini. There's rhubarb. There's Brussels sprouts. There's t there's like spices. There's everything you need just in the produce section. Look at it, my brother. Look at my brother saying words I've never heard him say before. And, here, and here's another thing. Here's another thing. I make a grocery list out now. I know where everything in the produce section is. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's grocery shopping takes me 20 minutes to yes. fill up my refrigerator. Yep. Okay. To get like a month's worth of food takes me a half hour to 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Before, it would take me a half hour and 45 minutes to find three or four days worth of regular groceries. Yeah. And I would have to go back again. Plus, it was eight times expensive. Like, wow. now it's like, because I don't have to travel to different parts of the store yeah. to get the menu, to get my food. Like, it's all right there. You know, I never thought about that. That's a really interesting way of putting that. Like, because we just went shopping this morning, me and Isabella, and... I knew exactly what I needed, and I only had a yeah. certain amount of time. I just went in and got it. I knew where everything was, and yeah. I had bought those things many times and knew where all yeah. the fun stuff was or whatever. That, and that it's about that, too. You've got to practice going to the store and practice yeah. finding out where these produce items are and where right. the grains are and where this, the stuff that you're going to eat according to your to the nutritarian diet. Yeah. You've got to find out where those things are in the store. Mm -hmm. But yeah, when you practice. do find out where those things those things are... You never have to go to those other places anymore. Yeah. So what about the leap of having to bring things with you for work? Did you did you struggle with that? Was that like, oh, my God, this takes so much work having to prepare beforehand? Was that a struggle for you? No, because I've, I've always been a cheapskate and brought my meals to work okay. anyway. I've always brought a sandwich or something like that. But yeah. I, will, I will tell you that it's super easy to get up on your lunch break and go to the subway or go to McDonald's or go to some fast food joint and, and get that food. And it's just easy to get that and eat it and just, yeah. but bringing food with me, like it's just an, like for me, it was a no brainer cause I'm such a cheapskate. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, think of it that way, guys, if you struggle, just think about the money that you'll save by bringing your yep. own stuff for sure. That's great. Um, are the weekends ever difficult for you when you're not working? Was it difficult for you at, you know, when you started to get through a weekend where you didn't have a schedule of something to do? No, but what I do remember is in the beginning when I didn't have a lot of things taking up my time, mm -hmm. it was easier to focus on the cravings. Yeah. It was a lot easier to focus on, oh my gosh, I don't get to eat this anymore. I don't get to eat that anymore. How did you get through and that? I would just eat a regular nutritarian meal. Okay. To take the edge off that hunger so that I could pay attention to what I needed to pay attention to. Okay. <clears throat> but in the beginning, especially because the cravings are so strong, it was literally like detoxing off a drug, dude. Like you can't think about anything else. Yeah. But what you want to, what you think you want to eat. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. It's what you think you want to eat. But in actuality, I didn't know what I was supposed to eat. Right. So my last question for you is... What is some advice for somebody that um, wants to get started? What's your best advice for someone that hasn't ever done this but wants to get started? I don't like to give advice. All I like to do is give my experience. This is me being honest as I, could, as I can. For me, it was about accepting the fact that I was obese, that my body was on its way towards death, that until I, until I started eating right, I never realized how horrible I actually felt. And then for me, I think for me, the next part was about learning about the standard American diet, um, learning what is actually real and what is not real, um, like the triangle, the food groups that you're supposed to eat off from every day. Yeah. That is a lie that accepting the fact that I've been ignorant, accepting the fact that the only way to change is to do the work and actually doing the work. I'm yeah. still kind of overweight. <clears throat> worlds of difference compared to where I was yeah. and I'm not where I want to be but I now see how ignorant I was how unhealthy I was and literally how close to death I actually was most of us don't understand that we're only a heart attack away yeah. from never seeing our family again yeah our family being devastated us being a memory 
of just some guy who ate red meat all the time. Yeah. Well, how did he die? He had a heart attack. Why did he have a heart attack? He couldn't stop eating red meat. I think the most important the most important part about it is actually making the choice. But the next most important part is doing the work. You've got to do the work. And it's some it's a very cliche saying that you only get out of a situation what you put into it. But if I do, if I wouldn't have changed and I die from a heart attack someday, or if I have a heart attack, I'm going to be filled with instant regret. What could I have done to change that? Yeah. And it was only it was only a matter of changing what I ate and how easy that actually is. Yeah. What, what I would really like people to understand is that this is not that difficult. The first month is hard. It's difficult. I will say the first month has its challenges. But once you get through that, it's not difficult. Once you actually learn about what we're actually doing with food, what Americans as a at what America as a country is doing with food yeah. and how it's changed over the last centuries. What did we used to eat a century ago? What we eat what we eat with our nutritarian diet plus yeah. the meat. Yeah. Now what do we eat? Burger King, McDonald's, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Subway. <laughs> what next time you go to McDonald's or even a nice restaurant, learn what's in that food. Mm-hmm. Learn the fact that you're putting six times the amount of sodium that you're that you're supposed to put in your body. Yeah. Learn that you're putting ten times the amount of fat that you're supposed to be putting in your body at that moment. If you don't learn those things, you you, you can't possibly understand what you're missing. Yeah. Or the damage you're doing. And I, I like what you said because it this idea that you could only be a month away from freedom. Mm-hmm. One month. One month away from being free of those literal shackles because they yeah. they shackle your brain. Uh, imagine yeah. Nate at this the restaurant craving that lasagna. After he had that lasagna, that oh my god, I have to have everything else in the world. That's a shackle. That's prison. Yeah. That's not a way to live. That's not freedom. No. Getting to choose whatever you want at a restaurant. That's not freedom. And here's another way I can put it. The world has turned our eating experience into an event. Yes. The world has changed eating into something that's supposed to be fun when it never was supposed to be fun. Right. Not fun, but an event. Right. It's not something that's meant to be celebrated. Yeah. Have your culinary have your culinary feasts every once in a while. Do that. But to live that way is going to kill us. Yeah. To eat at a chain restaurant every single day will kill us. Mm -hmm. Now, what are your kids going to say? What are their kids going to say? What is your wife going to say? What is your husband going to say? This is the one thing that probably could have stopped it. Yeah. And if you don't eat differently, it's because you didn't learn to choose differently. So when you know better, you do better. Yes. I think acceptance is the key to the entire thing. Accepting that you've got to learn. Accepting, Accepting that you've got to eat differently. Accepting that... Maybe well, you have a first problem. Of all, accepting the fact that you want to live a long life. Yeah. Number two is accepting that you need to eat right to live that long life. And then you've got to learn what to eat to live that long life. Yeah. And if you don't learn, you won't choose differently. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's good for you. <laughs> Nate, you're amazing. I love you, Brado. I love her too. <laughs> I love her so much. This has been incredible. Nate, thank you so much for your time. I have found this to be super helpful and I hope everyone else has too. I want to wish everyone luck with their journey because it is possible. All you have to do is decide. It's all you have to do. Thank you so much. Guys, as always, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please um, like, comment, subscribe so you can make sure to get the videos as I put these out. Let me know down below what was the biggest maybe aha moment or the thing that hit you the most from this interview. I'd love to know. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. Please check out my Patreon channel. I talk about this all the time, but it's really important to me as the creator of these videos, help to make more of these videos. It's a place where you can get some exclusive content like um, live Q&As with me. You can get some personal photos and some stuff I don't publish anywhere else, as well as some notes that I come across in my coaching and things like that to really help you guys in your journey. So check out patreon.com slash the watering mouth. Thanks again, bro, for doing this. This isn't the last we've heard from you. I know that for sure. Oh, it won't be.
All right. See you guys later in the next video. Bye. Bye. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> I had to do that because you do that all the time. You suck. Bye. -bye. <laughs>